Hi everybody and welcome to my fortnightly sky update on the occasion of the new moon in Aries which is happening on the 21st of March 2023 at about 5.23 UK time so adjust that time to your time zone and um, so this is another special uh, installment of the uh, fortnightly sky update because it's another eventful week. First of all, um, of course, the new moon in Aries is the beginning of the astrological year. So there's a lot of new energy with this um, new moon anyway. And it, it's clear for everybody to see um, if they simply look outside. And particularly for those of us who are living in very northern climes. Um, it is a huge relief, um, this new moon in Aries and this Aries season. So um, there's also a lot of new energy um, in the wider astrological picture as well, because as we know, Saturn, Saturn has just changed signs. Um, and is going to be in Pisces till 2026. And um, also Mars is changing signs this week from Gemini to Cancer. So, and Mars has been in Gemini, Gemini for quite a long time. And um, I think that that will be quite a nice change as well because Mars and Gemini is rather busy and... Um, it's kind of neurotic so um i think it will be nice to get a new mars energy going around well uh, going as well which is not quite so nervy and um, but the big 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 event is that pluto um at the time of this new moon is just on the cusp of changing signs and will be changing signs on thursday um so Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008 and Pluto is just about to go into the sign of Aquarius for 15, about 15 years. So this is a huge event. And of course, um, like I say, Pluto was in Capricorn uh, since 2008. And that was a really felt uh, transit of Pluto in Capricorn, I think, as everybody would agree because um, with Pluto being in an earth sign, the effects were very tangible and um, they couldn't be put down to the imagination um, or to just emotional feelings. The events were actually tangible in the economy, in the structure of society um, and they really affected everybody for that reason more or less. So um, while Pluto was in Capricorn, we saw um, a lot of uh, a lot of pressure put on the area of life that is signified by Capricorn, so on the social structure, on the patriarchy, on the rule, how society is structured hierarchically, um, on authority and power and we saw a lot of Saturnian, Cap Capricorn is a, is a Saturn rule sign, Saturnian defences coming up from um, authorities in society and um, from all of those things I've mentioned associated with Capricorn in, uh, in defence against the eroding and destructive influence of Pluto. But let's not forget that while Pluto was going through Capricorn, it also really affected um, the other cardinal signs, so Cancer, Libra and Aries. And so apart from obviously how this affected people who have planets in all of those signs, who in their lives in one aspect or another of their lives would have seen huge transformations and would have been put 
against potentially quite painful experiences that demanded that they transform. Um, but uh, apart from that, just on a kind of for everybody uh, basis, we saw pressure on family structure with, ca with uh, cancer. We saw pressure on how we relate with Libra. We saw uh, pressure on our sense of self and uh, having a, uh, a special identity or, um, or destiny in the world. And so we've seen a lot of also defences and coping mechanisms come up around these areas. And if you see what's happened to society and so society and so on those levels, you will see that there's been a lot of coping mechanisms that have come up around those areas and some of them have been quite toxic. And I think one of the areas which is particularly um, which we've, we've particularly seen a lot of uh, coping mechanisms and defence mechanisms come up are in the area of relationships. And I think that the Pluto and Scorpio generation in particular has taken power games and manipulation in relationships, in relating to the others, to a level where you know it's unsustainable at this point. If relationships want to continue to exist, they have taken the uh, the power games and the manipulation and the fearful relating of one person to another ad nauseum, really. It can't, it, it, it has to, at some point it has to stop for the sake of the existence of relationships at all. So I feel like the Pluto and Scorpio generation who are going to be, when uh, Pluto is in Aquarius and that Pluto is going to square their natal Pluto and Scorpio, that is really going to be challenged. And I think that generally Pluto and Aquarius will force people, because it's also a sign of relating Aquarius, I feel like Pluto and Aquarius will really force people to, um, to put a premium on authentic relating to people. And I'll talk about that a little bit uh, bit more in relation to how it may affect the other signs, uh, the other fixed signs. I also wanted to say um, with regard to coping mechanisms that if you look at the uh, part of your chart, your personal chart, which is ruled by Capricorn, so if you have a house where uh, the sign on the cusp of the house is Capricorn, you will see that in that house there have probably been coping mechanisms arise in your life to deal with the pressures that Pluto and Capricorn put on those areas. Now I think it's even more interesting when we look at it in the house placement because it's so subtle in a way. It happens over such a long time and so the, the, we, there would be one area in life where that Pluto transit through Capricorn since nine, 2008 was felt. And in that area of life, over those years, and because of the events that happened related to that transit of Pluto in uh, Capricorn, you have been forced, that area of your life has been forced to change, but because obviously the events surrounding Pluto can often be, can pretty much invariably be quite uncomfortable and um, frightening and uh, threatening to your survival or to your sense of your own survival, you can become quite obsessed with 
fixing that area of your life and in that area coping mechanisms have probably arisen over the years which now you may be addicted to um, and it may be a good time now with Pluto moving into a new sign to release some of those coping mechanisms related to what's been going on over those years and that may happen naturally with Pluto moving into a new sign of course Pluto will move into a new house and put pressure on that house though it may be felt in a more subtle way with it being with Pluto being in an air sign now Pluto was last in an air sign when I was a little girl in the 1980s so I was born um, in 81 and I was born with Pluto in the last decans of Libra so uh, in the 20s of Libra um, and I have seen Pluto I have lived through Pluto going through the last of an air sign um, I've lived through it going through a water sign Scorpio I've lived through it going through a fire sign Sagittarius and to be honest, for me, and it may be because by that time I'd come of age, but I really personally feel it was more because of the fact that it was in, in an earth sign, because I was warned about it. At the time that Pluto moved into Capricorn, I was at my astrology school and it was something being discussed and it was predicted that it would be very much a felt change because it was in an earth sign and that really um i really felt it happen even though i don't have planets in capricorn myself i really felt the pressure of the pluto in capricorn transit because of it being in earth and because it had such tangible effects on our working lives and our uh, uh, economic health and all of these things so while for me Pluto in Capricorn really became noticeable for the first time when I think back over it Pluto was always there Pluto was absolutely always there in all of his forms and he was always as dark and shadowy and frightening as ever but in some places, he was more psychological than in others. Felt on a more psychological, it felt in a way that you could think that maybe it was just you. You could think that it was um, in your head. And I think that that is the difference that we will be seeing more with Pluto being an air sign, that it will not be so tangibly felt on the material plane and it will be more easy to put it down to a psychological effect and it may be felt more as a psychological effect but nonetheless it will be uh, there and it will be felt. So in Aquarius I expect, I expect there to be, um, like I say, uh, pressure on how we behave to each other with Aquarius being another sign very much to do with relating and Aquarius is a sign that is by nature very ethical and values ethical relating so I think that this will be an area where pressure is felt and in one sense like I say I feel like that may be something that is necessary to happen because um, I feel that during the Pluto in Capricorn trans because of the material pressures and the societal pressures the world has become a bit too dog eat dog in terms of how we relate to each other and I think that because this was sextiling the whole time the Pluto in uh, Scorpio's generation Pluto that the uh, desire for 
power over one another, particularly sexual power and emotional power, the manipulation of the other in, in order to have power over them has kind of gotten out of control because Pluto in Capricorn was supporting that natal Pluto in Scorpio of that generation. Now, um, I feel like, like I say, Pluto in Aquarius is really going to uh, make people put a premium on authentic communication. Um, and uh, it, may, it may force uh, relating to be, become more authentic through uh, difficulties arising. I expect also there to be pressure on uh, the individual, however. I expect there to be quite a lot of pressure on the idea of the individual, the idea of people feeling like they're in any way unique. I feel like there's going to be a lot of pressure on creativity. Remember that this is going to be, Pluto is going to be opposing um, Leo, the sign of Leo, which is the sign of creativity, the sign of the divine child, the unique, uh, unique golden child, all of these things. So it's, yeah, I feel like there'll be a great deal of pressure on that whole idea um, of uniqueness, individual creativity. And I think you can see how the way society is going, that, that how that could be uh, a serious problem associated with developments in technology, Aquarius, and power in the area of, of technology and uh, technological development, Aquarius. Um, I also also related to Leo, uh, I expect there to be pressure to be put on how people relate to each other affectionately. You know, Leo is a sign that while it can be seemingly quite self-centered, that it's a very warm and affectionate sign with people around it on the ground, whereas Aquarius is quite the opposite. Um, Aquarius is quite a cold sign, but uh, very fair, but very cold and not self-centred. Uh, <laughs> paradoxically, Aquarius is very fair-minded, very considerate of the other, but not very warm. Uh, so I expect the, there to be uh, pressure on how we relate to our nearest and dearest. And I think that considering technology development society we can see the issues there already and Leo is to do with how we relate to children as well and I think that um, that uh, is the way that technology is affecting the way that people are relating to their children is is very important um, as well and I think that that's definitely going to be something that will come up and um, it's also going to be putting pressure on Scorpio so pressure on our intimate relationships and um, so and again I said it's for me it's kind of obvious how, how all of this is affected by the Pluto Aquarius situation which I feel is very much to do with developments in technology on the social level and how that affects more personal aspects where we find in the, our personal relationships, Scorpio, um, Leo, our creativity and our relationships with our children, our play and all of these kinds of things. And um, Taurus on our relationship with the earth as well. Uh, and potentially our ownership, our actual ownership of things. Um, in terms of where I expect some of the pressure to come off, I expect pressure to come off in terms of the 
burdens that we've been feeling in terms of the work and the economy and that fear around uh, societal collapse, um, economic collapse, uh, just endless difficulty in those areas and oppression in those areas. I expect the pressure to come off there, which I think will be very welcome. And I also expect, expect a lot of the pressure to come off the whole idea of patriarchy, men, male authority, what is the place of men, what is the status of men. I feel like men will be able to ease into a more comfortable symbolic existence in society at this point. Now that that has been all shuffled around with the uh, Pluto going through Capricorn era. And I feel like in that area, the Capricorn area, the dust is going to settle slowly, slowly, and we can leave some of that difficulty behind us. And there's going to be a new set of issues challenged in Pluto and Aquarius, which I think we can feel already. I always, these things are always on a continuum. It's not like anything's ever a surprise. The ground has been being prepared for Pluto going into Aquarius while he's been in Capricorn. So um, I think there will be, it will really not be too much of a surprise, uh, some of the developments that are going to happen. Um, but I think that him leaving Capricorn is probably a very welcome development. And the challenges that we're going to come up against, I think that there may be difficulties, um, absolutely. Um, but the uh, changes I think are needed and um, we will have to adapt and um, to the new reality and create new coping mechanisms um, to help us survive in, in the new, uh, with the new, status quo so that's where i'm going to leave it for this fortnightly sky update and i really hope that you found this helpful thank you so much